First Thessalonians By the grace of my father, the blessings of my brother, and as always, indispensable help of the Holy Ghost, we bring you the King James Version of 1 Thessalonians. In this book, uh, Paul extols Thessalonia as a great example of the gospel working properly. In the first chapter, he tells them, you're a shining example of how Christianity should look. Chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father, and in the Lord Jesus Christ, Grace be unto you, and peace, from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Two, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Three, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. For knowing, brethren, loved your election of God. I'm sorry. Knowing, brethren, beloved your election of God. Five, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. I want to break off there for a minute. His comment about the power, the gospel came to you, not just the word, but in the power in the Holy Ghost. Remember the gifts of the Holy Ghost. When they come in to play, it changes everything in, in a person's world. Uh, these are the miracles of God. You get to experience God firsthand through the miracles of the Holy Ghost. And it says that our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Six, and you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Seven, so that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Acaria. Eight, for from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to Godward is spread abroad, so that we need not speak anything. I'm sorry, so that we need not to speak anything. They're full of the Holy Ghost. When the Spirit of God is in you, when it surrounds you, it's a known event. It's, it's not a secret. The light comes in. Uh, these people had this. Uh, bounce over to... Uh, 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 did a whole thing on that. Uh, I'll think of it in a minute. Ah, nine. For they themselves show us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Ten. And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead 
even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Why become Christian? A little blurb on that. People had enhanced intelligence. They had uh, knowledge beyond their station. You had to understand stations. You know, if you were real poor, you had no education. You could pretty much put one rock on top of another. Uh, if you were rich, you had all the education in the world. With the event of the Holy Ghost, people that had no education or limited education became as knowledgeable as those who had an education. Maybe not specific in anything, you know, like engineering or science, but understanding everything that was going on. That's part of having the Holy Ghost in your life. That's part of having him in your church. Someplace we need to head. And walk.